Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to welcome you to yet another Raiding Climb. This one is going to be me playing with the white pieces, starting with one E4 in every game. Now, the format is that I am playing against my Twitch subscribers. Much love to them. We're live streaming this right now, but YouTube Levy does make an appearance. Uh, Twitch subs got into a queue. We're going to get things going with Jason508 and... Let me just refresh some anticlimactic starts. And there we go. We have a three minute game, E4, five second bonus. Let's see if my opponent makes a move. All you guys have to do is be in live chess. Jason 508 is not in live chess, apparently. Some deep thinking here from my opponent. Plays the Scandinavian defense. Now, the best thing to do against this is to take it. See if he's going to bring his queen out. This guy inspired by the efforts of a one John Bartholomew. Now what? There is knight c3, which attacks. There is also knight f3. For this game, I'm going to show you my weapon. I like to play knight f3. I like to play knight f3. And I like to play knight f3 uh, because I... Okay, that is a really weird move. I have no idea what that does. I'm going to go bishop b2. Uh, odd move, queen h5, not going to lie. But uh, people on YouTube are very critical of when I call my opponents weird uh, or, you know, criticize some of their moves. So he's not weird. He's, he's just creative. Earlier today, actually, I was called the most arrogant chess player that ever existed by someone on YouTube, which is very impressive on my part, I have to say. Castles. So, the point here is that you delay d4 and c4. You just knight f3, bishop e2, and you just try to castle. And my opponent here, probably thinking about what to do, plays e5. Now, first things first, can I take that? He just takes with the queen. Nothing there. At this point, this move, he's just trying to come forward. I'm just going to bring my knight out, develop another piece. I know I said d4 and c4, but I feel like developing, I feel like stopping his pawn coming from e4. There's a lot of things you could do early on. Uh, I could have played pawn up as well. All those things would have been possible. Also, best by test. If anybody understands the username, that is not a good move. That is a one move mistake. So we already see the first one move blunder. I literally just played knight c3 to prevent the pawn from coming to e4 and he pushed it and I took it. So seeing these one move mistakes early on, even in the opening, definitely a common mistake. Okay, bishop g4 hitting me like this. Now there's a lot of different ideas here. Checks, captures, attacks. I mean, I see that I can check. None of those moves do anything. Bring my knight back, hit his queen. That's not a bad move. Uh, and I can also attack him like this. As long as you're recapturing here with this bishop, you're completely fine. Yeah, this is, this is dangerous for him because now his queen's under attack. All right. So now his queen's under attack. Queen g6. Again, I can't really check him. Um, I see his king is in the center, so I'm considering a move like rookie one. But then, of course, he can just long castle. Now, assuming that long castle happens, um, I will probably be able to start some sort of attack on this side of the board. So if I play d4 and he castles queenside, his rook now hits here. And I can probably just develop my bishop. Kind of like that. I like to take some space. And when he castles queenside, I can play c3. I can play bishop e3. I can play any of these moves. Uh, somebody says, why can't I play this move to prevent castling? Uh, because then... Oh. No, actually, that would have been a pretty interesting idea. So just to showcase that, that was an interesting idea. Uh, I guess he would have played h5 to attack my bishop. If he played f5, I would have pinned him to his king. So, cool idea. I'm just gonna go with this one. Alright, I don't want to overcomplicate. Another thing that I also want you guys to... Uh, just kind of keep in mind as you do this is... You don't need to get into time trouble early on. It's really not something that you, you need to spend a million years calculating different options, especially in Blitz. Obviously, I recommend 10 and 15 minute games, but I cannot be playing 10 and 15 minute games all the time. So Knight of 6 I'm just going to take. Not 
too complicated. Queen f6, so what is that queen attacking? Ask yourself that question. He is attacking this pawn. This is not a complicated decision. I just defend, okay? Oh, and another thing, yes, I do get this question here. If I had played bishop here and he took my knight, queen, king in the center. Beginners oftentimes leave their pieces like this in the center. It definitely does happen. Now we let him think. All right, bishop e7. That doesn't attack anything. Now, what do you know about an opposite side castled king? Don't give him a check for no reason. The king just moves. So b4 is something I'm considering. Queen a4 is something I'm considering. a4. Now, if you cannot tell the difference between three different moves or four different moves, you just have to play a move and make sure it doesn't make a mistake. b4 does not make a mistake. And you will sometimes not know the difference between some moves until you play. Don't get low on time. And so you play here, here, a combination of these moves, and go for an attack. My light scored bishop is extremely powerful. Now, he has a move like knight e5 in this position. And uh, the point is that I'm pinned. Let's play a4. This is called a hook. A pawn in front of a castled king is called a hook. You can hit it like this and force a trade, which would then open up for the rook. ABCs of checks. Of chess. Yes. Always be checking. And now he's thinking. Again, he's down to 20 seconds. He is playing an IM, so... Time management has been a little bit tricky for him. Still, I can go b5, by the way. You don't need to worry about losing a pawn here because the rook is open. And by the way, it is it is very bad. Rook a8, his king runs out. So maybe I play bishop g4 first. Very common motif. You see, he wants to go here, here. So let's not let him. Let's go here first. King has to hide. And then I play queen a4, and he cannot... Um, He actually could be able to stop me. Hopefully he just blocks with the rook. But don't tell him, okay? Don't tell him. Now, it is still dominant. I mean, queen a8 is very difficult to stop. We opened up the a-file attack. And he finds the best move. Credit to him. Don't trade the queens when you're attacking. Do not trade the queen when you are attacking. Do not trade the queen when you are attacking. Let's open up another attack on his queen. Okay. Let's go here, maybe? As in, that's the idea. Let's just bring the second rook to the party. Demonstrate how to attack with the rooks and the queen. That is a free knight. Uh, do I want the free knight? Okay, I will be principled. Alright, I will take the free knight. I will take the free knight. Now we will maybe bring this guy back. Again, the, the way to win this when you are completely out material is that you try to... Okay, that, 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 that is a move. Um, I mean, I can actually just take because my rook is protecting horizontally, not just attacking vertically. Plays bishop e4. We are threatening checkmate. Maybe he goes b6, setting up a getaway. He takes. Don't get distracted. Rook a8, checkmate. 1 and 0. Oh, 806 is the rating. Now, most instructive moments. Knight f3, bishop e2 against the Scandinavian, just looking for a quick short castle. And developing in the center. One move blunder. Attacking the bishop when it comes here. As long as you can get this bishop back out. And we didn't do anything super complicated. Honestly. Didn't do anything super complicated. Um, seemed like we played a relatively straightforward game. Now. The only instructive moment I should say in the middle game. Is beginning a pawn storm on our opponent. When they castle on the other side. Cool. Cool. Okay. Tree for beard, let's go. Get out of this game. 
Tree for Beard, you're in live chess. We got E4 on the board. Now, I will have to... Okay, I will have to say, yeah. Let's go classic. Knight F3. Knight F6. Well, this is the Petrov defense. I mean, you should take this pawn if they, if they allow you. Normally, they play Knight C6. Okay, this is already a mistake. So, takes, takes. This is actually a mistake, and it loses to the move Queen E2. Okay, so knight takes, knight takes, uh, oh, whoa, 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 buddy. Hello? What? Now, here he has this move. Wow. Wow. Okay. I'm just gonna defend my pawn. Is this some... Is this... This is the main line? This is a main line position. What? This is a main line position? Wow, you guys are brave. Chess is weird. I don't I don't understand anything anymore. I'm be, I, I'm be, I'm being Oh, wow. Well, today the 900s taught me something. I did not even know this. I as far as I knew, this was always considered bad. Wow. Never mind. Never mind, Eric Rosen teaches this. I would like to rescind all of my statements. Never mind. Wow. To try to go here and here, huh? Okay, well, when you're caught out in the opening, just consolidate, I guess. I mean, make natural moves. All right, let's go bishop d3. I mean, what am I going to do? Look at this. Wow. Now, I feel like I should solidify here. I feel like I should play, like, f4. Maybe we play f4. Wait, 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 I'm, I'm crazy. I could have just moved my knight. Oh my god, I could have just moved my knight. I could have just moved my knight. I could have just... Y'all, you guys are... I... See, this is why 700 shouldn't play this. This right here. You guys confuse me. You guys confuse me. I played a move. I played a logical move defending my queen. And... Oh, this is going to be such a YouTube blooper now. And now he's just down a piece. You see why this is bad for a 700? Because five moves in, my opponent's down a piece. Come on, guys. So, look, look, look. The, the point there is that black is playing on this queen pin. But then I defended my queen. So he had to take my knight, and he just didn't. So, I, just, I, I mean, I, I'm kind of terrible, so I just played this move, because I spaced out for a second. But, okay, well, you're up a piece. Let's teach these viewers how to win up a piece, huh? You guys are driving me insane right now. It's mainline theory, Levy. What are you... The guy lost a piece on the fifth move. Okay, I'm gonna take. This is why we don't memorize theory, okay? Now. Knight a3. Because I have nowhere else to put my knight. Does he see this? My bishops are stacked. Okay, I'm winning, so I like a bishop trade. I definitely like a bishop trade. And I also will offer a trade of rooks. You're up a full knight. You can, you can trade some pieces. Ah, uh, that attacks my bishop. I will take his rook. I'm assuming he's gonna... Okay, I will offer another trade of rooks. So this is total simplification. The next person to play me will be... Christoph B. Christoph B, could you please get into live chess? Christoph B. Uh, I'm going to try to jump around the queue today, guys. Uh, there's a lot of people, uh, and I feel as though I cannot play 50 people at the same time. I want to try to keep it about, you know, an hour, maybe 90 minutes. So I'm going to try to jump around the queue, and if we can bump, him, bump up the queue to Christoph B, try to play everybody, you know, 800, 900, 1,000... Okay, let's take this pawn. That's all I did here. He should not trade all his rooks. He should not trade his rooks. Now I'm going to pick up some of his knights. All right, let's bring the knight back. And let's swing this forward. That's not attacking anything. A4.
Okay. Let me play a5. Now, I actually can play a6, because my opponent cannot bring the king closer to the pawn uh, because of my knight. Okay, that's a free pawn. Now, again, he can't bring his king. Oh, and that's what I was waiting for. He was in the square. The square. Two... Squares to the right, two down. This is where his king had to be to stop my pawn from promoting. He got closer, but he let my pawn go. I know the knight is worth more than the pawn, but when the pawn becomes a queen, it is GG, yo. Bishop under attack, but bishop can take the pawn. And now, you the easiest way to win this as a beginner is to make a second queen. So that is what I'm going to do. I also have a check. You should always look for a check. This check will win a bishop. That doesn't really stop him. Make a second queen. And please do not resign. I also would like to demonstrate to the beginners of the day who are watching the easiest way to win. So make a second queen, and then we will chase this king down with two queens. Boom. Queen. Now. A lot of people get confused how to do a ladder mate on an open board. You need to find the fastest way to cut the king off, either vertically or horizontally. You can do that by playing the move c4. Now the queen cuts the king off. You bring this queen all the way back. And that's it. Checkmate in two moves. Check. And we have a lot of mates. All, du, trois. Cut, sunk, pick one. All right. Christoph B, you are the next opponent. Let's go. And I guess most instructive thing here, we had a little bit of opening drama. I was informed that this gambit in the Petrov defense, where you both take, is apparently an opening. This is not bad. It used to be bad when I was younger, but uh, it's apparently something that you can try. Now, this is the only thing about this position is that if you're going to play like this, you need to not blindly memorize moves. You do have to understand why every single move is played. And the whole point here is that the queen is not guarded and the knight cannot move. But once I guarded, okay, forget about this move for a second, but you can't just play like this. I consolidated, developed my pieces. And after I got all my pieces out, simplified, tried to win the endgame by promoting... Two queens, easiest way to win. All right, two and zero. Oh. Christoph B, here we go. E four. This guy's eight hundred and seventy. What does he got for me? Karo Khan. So, Karo Khan, Black wants to play D five. Now, I'm not gonna go here. In my opinion, e5 is the, is the easiest way to play against the Karakhan. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the exchange Karakhan. Because I feel like for a beginner, this is the easiest thing to learn. You play just simple chess, knight f3. Okay, just play knight f3. Normally you play bishop d3 and c3. You play c3 so he can't play knight b4. Okay? Play c3, he can't play knight b4. I'm going to put my bishop out. I'm going to defend. My knight goes here. It covers this knight. Queen always likes to come out this way. When you see the bishop leaving, you can play a move like this. And now you are attacking this weak b7 pawn in the Karakhan. Okay. Uh, there is a problem with this move. Okay. And it has to do with my opponent's king safety. Normally, in this position, you can just castle. That is the simplest. However, you can punish opening mistakes very early, and that's the whole point of this raiding climb. I'm going to play bishop b5 because 
He does not have a bishop or a pawn that can guard his knight. Since he does not have a bishop or a pawn that can guard his knight, he's going to have to do it with a rook or a queen or a king, I suppose. And all those things lose because I am getting to his king before he castles. If his king was castled, none of this would be possible. Right. Now I play knight e5 and he's simply losing. So this is the thing. Opening mistakes can be punished very early as they pertain to the king and hanging pieces. Be very careful playing moves like b6, especially if they destabilize the knight on c6. Okay? So bishop b5, we quickly take advantage, get a nice win. And that's it. Now, this is the cue, my friends, for today. Oh, I thought there was a command. Apparently there isn't a command. Queen d7 runs into knight e5 all the same. Now the question is, what do I take here with the bishop of the knight? I think I will take on c6. Queen b6? No, you can also play queen c8. The thing is that you, you can be passive here with the queen as long as you don't weaken your, your diagonal to your king, okay? So now we pick up the knight on c6. What's up, kinda pink Jake? Getting that, getting that YouTube and Twitch shoutout, big boss. Okay, I'm winning. So I can take a bishop. I will trade some pieces. I'm gonna castle. So now that I'm up a piece, what do I do? Of course I want to bring my rooks to the center of the board. I really want to make trades, and I'm not going to teleport rook f1 to f4. And really, the, the, the biggest question is, where on which side of the board am I going to be attacking, right? I'm winning, but on which side of the board am I going to be attacking if I am going to be attacking on either side or any side of the board? Okay, that just helps my cause. So... I'm just going to take that because we're going to do this very simply. Um, what do I do with my queen? Pawn push, pawn push, just bring the rooks. I think this move is relatively straightforward. It activates the rook and I'm attacking the e4 pawn. That move counterattacks on f4. I play it rook e4. He attacks my rook. Let's just take. I mean, I, I'm i defending. It's fine. I think this is fine. He attacks my rook. I just move my rook. His queen no longer attacks my bishop. Let's eat some food, by the way. I do have some lunch here with me today. So some salmon. Uh, salmon Lucy made with some arugula salad, corn, cucumbers, and avocado if... Someone watching on YouTube now doesn't know where to find pictures of food. Gotta join the Discord. I'm gonna drop this rook back. I could reinforce it, actually. That's probably a better move. But I'd like to go here and pin his bishop to his queen. What's wrong with bishop d6? The queen is attacking my rook. Seems like a small problem. <clears throat> yeah, root g3, exactly. Bishop e5 is a move. Yes, I see a lot of you suggesting different ideas. Yes, bishop e5 and rook g3. He doesn't have a lot of time. Okay, he plays this. That weakens this pawn, but he is guarding it with the bishop. Now I see a little fork. Right? So... That move looks like it wins material. I 
And the way you find stuff like this is checks captures attacks. I mean, I, I did have a plan, but his move gave me a new tactical idea. Right? And so, okay, I just take with the rook. I mean, I take the rook. I don't take with the rook. Now I want to bring this guy. I feel like I am not playing with my rook, so let's bring the rook to work with the other rook. And we are relaxing. Okay. Don't get tunnel vision. The queens also see each other. If this queen was not guarded, I can bet that some people watching would have taken this pawn and hung a queen. Lucky for me. I mean, I am. At the same time, my, my, my queen is protected. But you do need to think about when pawns move, not just looking at what can take, but what doors open and what pieces see each other. So he plays e5. I will take on e5. I will take this as well. c5, that's not really an attack. Let me attack his bishop. Now, <clears throat> attacking his rook, let's see if he sees my idea. Uh, he didn't. This opened the door for my rooks, and now my rooks attack his bishop. Check. We don't have to make a queen here. Depending on where he puts his king, okay. I'm going to take this with check, which will force his king to come forward or to h6. The bishop is protecting the rook. Um... Now, do not give a check like this, because your bishop is serving a job of protecting your rook. You cannot check with the rook, but you do have a second rook. King h5. If you go here, he just goes back. You can take. But, you have mate in two here. Pawn check forward. King comes forward. And now, you free up that square. King on the edge of the board will run down and try to take your stuff. Rook h6, and we get the win. 821. Okay? Harakon defense. The simplest thing to do when you're starting out is to take and develop the way I did with the bishop and the knight. Bring the queen out to b3. He made a mistake and with his king in the center ran into a pin. But if he had played more solidly, then we castle and then the game goes on. I recommend putting a knight on e5. Trying to work on this diagonal, rookie one, and the game goes on. Just an easy symbol to understand. Paracon weapon. Okay? Alright, random pawn. Get into live chess, please. Get into live chess, please. Random pawn. 920. Let's see what random pawns got for me. We've seen this, this, and this so far. Which one of them is going to get played for sure? One of them is going to get played for... Oh, right. There's also this. Okay. Traditional Sicilian defense. Knight f3. I'm going to play the closed Sicilian. e4, c5. Lungio. Thank you for the five gifted subs. The YouTube folks are not going to know anything about gifted subscriptions. But uh, you, should guys, you guys should come check out the Twitch channel. It's pretty awesome here. g3. This is the closed Sicilian defense. You put the bishop on g2. Try to play d3, bring this bishop out, being the queen, and you try to play f4. You try to make this outward bowl of pawns against the Sicilian defense. h3, g4 in the future, and you will start a kingside attack. Okay? Knight f3. I really like to play like this. I really recommend this for beginners because it's not confrontational. You, you, you don't get hit with... Okay, wait. Is that just a free pawn? Can I just take that? Can I just take this? I think he thinks that there's queen a5. I think that's what he thinks. And it's not a bad idea. But the problem is that my knight just comes back. Okay, never mind. He just attacked. Okay. <laughs> Alright, that was just not a good move. He just gave me a free pawn. Okay. He just gave me a free pawn. Bishop c6. Keep with my plan. Castle. Right, I'm just getting, uh, getting castled before I go on the attack here. <laughs> early early mistakes. Now, how do you attack on the same side here? You play f5, g4. All those moves are possibilities. I'm going to finish my development. I'm going to play bishop e3, put the queen here so that bishop and queen have a battery. And anytime there's a bishop... Ooh. I can take this or push. 
Now I think I'm going to take, let me explain to you my logic, the rook opens up. f5 is a good move, but when I take, in the future, my rook is going to be on an open file, right? And I can play queen d2, and I'm going for this plan. I'm going to trade off his dark squared bishop, which is going to weaken his king. Uh, also, those of you asking why didn't I castle queenside, it's just a choice, but normally in this opening, uh, your opponent is going to create a queenside attack, and so I just put it on the same side. Now, checks, captures, attacks. Remember how that was my plan? It's not my plan anymore, because this move used to guard this, and that's just a free pawn. So you don't have to get tunnel vision. Sometimes you can react immediately to an opponent's move. That move hangs upon... He just gives me a free pawn. I want you guys to get into the habit of taking free stuff. You will be getting free stuff from your opponents. Whoa! That is really free stuff. That is just a rook. That is just a rook. Okay. Well, now I don't have this plan, but I do have this plan. Knight to g5. And uh, my open rook and my knight going a little bit to work here. This is not winning by any stretch of the imagination. The current balance is that... Oh, no. That's another mistake. My opponent didn't see this. Um, I want to take with the rook, but actually knight takes is also good. Rook attacks the queen, but don't just take stuff because you're attacking stuff, right? Because then he plays something like queen c5 check. You're not trapping the rook. So actually knight takes is better, in my opinion. I am threatening to play knight h6 check, which wins the queen. And for anybody confused against what's we're, what we're doing, the Twitch crowd, uh, we are starting at 800 and we're playing a raid and climb series with uh, one e4 playing against subs. We start a queue about 30 minutes before game time. He moves. I can still go knight h6 because it is protected by my queen. Let's see what he does. He might move to the corner. He might take my knight. Now, I don't want a repetition. I want to continue to improve my position. So how do I do that? I can get my rook in the game by doubling. And also play the move knight d5. All right, so knight d5 is protected by my pawn and my bishop. And it's offering him a trade. We've seen this throughout the day. I'm winning, so I just want to trade some of my opponent's active pieces. And he allows me to do that, which I'm very happy about. Now opening an attack on his bishop. Thank you, Barakui, for the sub. A lot of you resubbing. Appreciate it. And if you're on YouTube and you're not a subscriber yet, and you're watching right now, this very second. I don't know what you're waiting for. Okay. It is time for tactics. It is time for tactics. In this position, checks, captures, and attacks. This is a check. This is a check. But king goes to g8, and there is nothing. I can't capture anything. I literally cannot capture anything. But I have a move here that is a discovered attack. d6, opening the door for the bishop. And by the way, that is not the only idea. That is not the only idea. And I'm afraid. I'm very afraid. I'm very afraid. This is also potentially a, an attraction tactic. It attracts his queen to a square, and he might think, well, it's fine, I'm going to get the bishop. But there was something else lurking there. So I will take the bishop for free. Now, I'm not sure why he's not taking this free pawn. This is a free pawn at the end of the day. I'm really not sure why he's not taking it. Okay, just kidding. There was knight f7 there. Takes, queen d6. Now I'm up a rook. If he takes, it's game over. It's been game over. Queen, now, go here, bring the bishop back, but the most direct way to play for a win, max danger, always look for max danger, rook f7. This doesn't win by force, but it is the best move, because you use your peace majority to go attack the king, who ways to win a game of chess. And he might play this move, which is a very good move, actually, but he's not going to play it, because there is actually a, okay, Good. Good attempt, but there's two threats. Not just queen h7, but queen g7 is the backup plan. Queen g7 was the backup plan, and rook f7 is unfortunately a type of move where you cannot prevent both threats. 
You cannot defend against queen h7 and queen g7. Rook f7 works. Now, in this position, he could have played the following move. He could have played queen b6 check. That's why you always should look for a check. And if king g2, he actually takes my bishop with another check. However, because white can hide from the checks, there's just no more checks. I mean, that's not really a check. Again, you cannot defend against both threats. That's really, that's just unfortunately the reality of the situation. It is winning. So I highly recommend against the Sicilian, the closed Sicilian. This is just my, one of my, you know, I'm, I'm going to play different openings every time, but I just develop my pieces, a couple of small things here, opening the position in terms of thinking how your pieces are activated and reacting to opponent's moves that used to protect something. Cool. And oh my goodness, we just got a raid from Anna Chess. Anna, hope you're doing well. Uh, we are doing an E4 raiding climb. I need Mode. Mode in live chess. Please join live chess. There's Mode. We are starting at 800 today. We're currently at 800 and... What's my rating? 31. Slow climb playing folks that are 800 to 1200. Another Scandinavian! Okay, takes. If you're 800, stick around. Now, last time I played knight f3. So this time I'm going to play knight c3. Just going to give you different weapons... Against this, I should tell you that they want you to go here so that they'll play this. So delay knight f3, play bishop c4. This is a little bit more flexible of a move. It puts an attack on f7. It's very venomous. Uh, our opponent might play knight f6. And look at that! Someone just got the e4 course. Let's play knight f3. Now I will show you the true power of this move. I will show you the true power of this move. Bishop g4 is a natural Scandinavian approach to the position, trying to trade. Oh, he, they blundered. They blundered. No. They blundered. Bishop takes f7. They have to play knight f6 before that. Bishop takes f7. No. A Scandi player goes down. F in the chat for the Scandi player. And the whole point here is that if king takes, I go knight g5 with a check. And he can't take my queen. I take back. It's gg. So, Scandi players, be very careful. Bishop f5 or knight f6 has to go first. And I, this is why I did it. Oh my, oh my, that's brave. That is brave. Okay, that doesn't work because it's covered. But bishop d5 is an idea, and I, I, I think this is going to happen. And then we're going to get this, this, and then... The, oh no, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm just bringing my bishop back here, attacking the knight. Uh, new folks... Uh, drop a follow, hang around. We've got a, a fun show in store today. I'm going to be doing this for the next two hours, basically, so. Okay, so I, I, I can take, and I, and I have been taking, to simplify the position. I don't know what my opponent's thinking about here. Let's play h3. Okay, takes, but that's not the right approach. My opponent should be keeping the bishop. The queen comes out, the queen now attacks this. I have a really bad feeling my opponent is going to play this move, defending this pawn, and completely forget about this. Let's see what happens. And uh, my next idea is just to castle. I've been castling short because it's been available. A lot of you have been asking, should I castle this way? Also possible. Also possible. We've got 7,100 viewers. That is an astounding number. Thank you so much for that. That's a good move, King B7. Okay, castles. Wow. And another donation for the courses. Now, my friends, what's the best move here? YouTube folks, just be patient with me for a second. What is... What is the best move here for white? What do you guys think? We've had a king on the other side of the board before. We had it a couple of games ago. Have you been paying attention? Yes. Yes. Before. But of course before. I mean, you've got the queen lined up. Right? You got the queen lined up. You got to go for this. He wants, he wants to cover it. We ain't letting that happen. B5 is on the way. Rook B1. Line up all the pieces to attack the king. I mean, you might as well. I mean, you might as well, right? Rook B1 and B5. Let's go. Let's go. We got to get to the king. Now, some of you asking, Levy, you said simplifying is good. What about knight e4? Fine. 
But the king is so weak in this position that you might as well just attack it, right? That's not a bad move. So the idea is that b5 takes, takes, don't mess this up. So I'm going to play rook b1 so that the rook is on the other side. Okay? Mm, okay, that king used to protect something. What did that king used to protect? What did the king used to protect? C6. So don't get tunnel vision. The king used to guard the C6 pawn, and now we just take it. And uh, this, is, this is rough now. We're up two pawns. The king is very weak. Now, what my opponent should do is probably trade the queen. Okay, that's not a bad move. I like that move. I really would like to play bishop here. Also, sacrificing. You guys ask me a lot when to sacrifice, right? Right now is when you sacrifice. Right now is when you sacrifice. Th th this is a winning move. Uh, the point being that upon captures, captures, shout out a godmator, uh, rook a1 and the queen in the corner is the problem. The king is just totally stranded here. So my opponent does not have a king move. He has to take, take, or take with the rook and give away the rook. Did I have to do that? No, I could have played a lot simpler, but you guys ask me a lot about these kinds of things. and That is, uh, that is when you would sacrifice right here. Okay, take with check, king b8, and rook a1. We had this in the first game, pattern recognition, queen and rook, same line. Queen guards the rook, rook guards the queen, let's go. Let's go, queen a8, checkmate. My opponent could survive this with some good play, could survive this. But, gonna be tough. Now, surviving this would have been possible had my opponent played something like queen d5, stopping this. Um, but uh, then I would have probably played queen a7. And here is where you can employ the simplification idea. Trade the queen and win this endgame position, where you obviously have a huge material advantage. Uh, but again, a different weapon against the Scandinavian early on with knight c3 and bishop c4. Uh, and people who play this with the black pieces, you got to be very careful not blundering bishop takes f7. You have to be very, very careful with this. Next player is MLSEG, our last 900 rated player of the day. And then, there we, then we will play the 1000s. All right, e4, here we go. e5. So last time I played knight f3... This time I will play knight f3 again, because we got a Petrov, we didn't get knight c6. Now, a lot of different things you can play here. I'm going to go for El Clásico, Alfil c4, bishop c4, knight f6. This allows the fried liver attack. Knight to g5, let's see how well my opponent knows the fried liver attack. d5, that is the best move, pawn takes d5. That is the best move. Now, knight takes d5 here, standard practice. Not the best move, though. Because now you have kaboom, kablam, knight takes f7 with an exclamation mark. The king takes. Queen f3 check, hits the knight, and the king. <laughs> What's up, Harstam in the chat? Harstam, you made an appearance on my last raiding climb. You're back on this one. This is the best move. Knight c3. Rolling in here with all this pressure. And uh, I actually get comments on that YouTube video when I, when I shout out Harston with the raid. And people are like, I didn't know Harston played chess, that's so cool. So this is the point. It's very dangerous for Black. If he's looking at an openings database right now, he will find the best moves. I hope he's not doing that. Those of you that want my playlist, by the way. Man, I feel bad for YouTube, they can't hear it. There's just a command, it's just a playlist command. Alright, Knight back to E7. That's not a bad move, I actually don't know the right move here, theoretically. Um, but with the king stuck in the center, I don't think I have to do anything insane. I'm actually just going to castle, play rook e1 and d4. This is sort of the problem with the fried liver allowing it, is that even though black is up a piece, black's king is god knows where, just stuck in the direct center of the board. Right, so... Now we just await the move. c6 is a good move. I can play d4 right away, probably, and I will do it. 
because it's more forcing. All right, so d4. If he takes, wasting another move, opening his king, rookie one check. Now, the best move in the fried liver is knight to b4, but then white can play crazy stuff. All right. Is this really, like, survivable? Really? This is very brave. So let's think. Rookie one, king d7, takes, takes, takes. He doesn't have to take, but he could. I also have takes, takes, bishop b5. I also just don't have to take. I can maybe pin his knight, sacrifice a piece, but look. I feel like beginners here would be playing moves like rookie one, so that's what I'm going to play. What's up, Reigns? How are you? Uh, Gallo, appreciate you uh, getting the course. We're going to raffle that off. Another thing that the YouTube folks miss, man. Another thing that they miss. And listen, I'm only calling all of you out personally because we're live streaming this, all right? I got to keep two sets of folks entertained. So hopefully y'all uh, come on over. Rookie one is a good move, but maybe this king is going to escape. I still don't quite believe. I still do not quite believe in this. Oh, queen g3. I mean, the king wants to escape, so that's the first thing that I'm thinking of. Don't let the king escape. Use a diagonal check. Don't let the king escape. The only move is king c5. On king c5, I have knight a4. If king c4, I have queen b3 mate. GGO. King wants to run. Knight a4 check. Take my bishop, I dare you. Take my bishop, I dare you. Let's go. Let's go. The king on c4 is not going to get it done, even at the cost of two pawns. Look, my opponent could have absolutely played that better. Some of you asking, what about king d7? Those of you asking about king d7, you're making a very fair point. That would have been the best move for sure. For sure. And probably my idea here was to play something like knight e4. I think that that was my point. I want to set up either queen d6, knight c5, and just in general... Uh, a very, very vicious king hunt. I also could have maybe played knight takes d5, c takes d5, and bishop b5. Here is the bottom line. When you are 960, when you are 960, you cannot weaken your king to such an extent. Okay? That's the point. That's the point. You should not allow the fried liver because it weakens your king to such an extent. Okay? Now, for those of you that are curious, a little bit of a better option than allowing the fried liver is just to play bishop c5. Okay? It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter that I'm my rating, obviously, and I am playing somebody who potentially is, would be playing against folks that would not find the best move. It is always scarier to have a weak king. It doesn't matter whether you're playing 900s, 1000s, whatever. It does not matter. It's just very scary to have such a weak king. And so the fried liver attack, I mean, to this day, is a dangerous weapon, and I wanted to include it uh, in, in one of the games of the climb. So... All right. We make it to the 1000s. TJ Murphy, let's go. I want to see you in live chess, big boss. Let's start the games. TJ Murphy is next. E4. On the board. We've had Scandinavian multiple times. Um, we've had e5 multiple times. e5 again. I will play knight f3 again. For now, we'll play only knight f3. And time to take a sip of the lay crocs. Do I play bishop c4? I think I'm going to play d4. Let's play a scotch. Let's play a scotch. The scotch opening. Very, very good system. My opponent is already thinking. I do recommend this as well. What? That's not a move, is it? I've never seen this move in my life, so I could take. I mean, people do do this. They leave this pawn. Uh, I can play knight c3. I can push. I'm out of theory, too. He's out of theory. I'm Everybody's out of theory. Um, if I take and he takes... Can I trap his knight? This is confusing me. I don't know. What do you guys want me to do? Should I take? Is e5 free? e5 looks free. d5 also looks pretty good. Let's take. I mean, I feel like if they leave it here and it's free, we should take it. But this is not so bad. I actually think the better move was to play d5. I think the better move is d5, but it's okay. Eh. 
And uh, if you're okay, okay. Now I don't want him to go here. I'm just gonna play bishop c4. I'm setting up something really vicious. We just saw a fried liver game, and uh, oh no, oh no. So first of all, I have this, this queen d5, forking the king and the knight. But does this move win? Yeah, I think it does. Queen d5. Bishop f7, but queen d5 is also possible. Hits this, hits this, hits this. No, I mean, the thing is, you, you, you can win very quickly if you play aggressively. And when you're an e4 player, whether you play the scotch, the fried liver, you know, we had, um, we had a Petrov earlier. Soon I'm gonna stop playing knight f3. I mean, from, from here on out, I'm gonna... Right, now the best move here is to maintain a vision of the bishop, okay? So king or king f1. I mean, we should probably play a delayed bond cloud with king e2. So f2 is hit, this is hit. I can't mate. I can't mate because it's check. I have to move my king up. Okay, take the knight. And we've won a knight, he's bringing the bishop back. Now he wants the castle. My king's weak. I can mock my rook back, can also play knight c3, knight d5, can also play bishop g5. Uh, I think I'm going to develop a knight because I like, I like this knight coming to d5. Mm, that's a checkmate threat. This is also a checkmate threat. Knight d5. Oh man, there's just so many options. There's so many options. So many options. I like the prospect of getting one more piece into the game. Let's go knight d5. Let's go knight e5. I like hitting the queen. I like this. This is safe. The king is pretty safe. I mean, you always have to look at checks, but I could take that. So, we have a little bit of a weak king, but unlike the last game, our king can't really be attacked. That's the difference, is that in the last game, my opponent was suffering with the weak king. It was under some pressure, but... Oh, that doesn't work. Oh, and we have a beautiful mating combination. White to move, checkmate in three. He is doing equal danger, but he forgot that when I take, it's a check. And then we have mate in three. Check. Check. Mate. Oh my goodness, that is nice. And the bishop cuts the king. Check. Check. Mate. Oh, that is... That is nice. I mean, that's a nice little tactical sequence there. Always look for checks. And sometimes, just looking for checks in tactical patterns actually gets you the win. Very nice. Bishop on c4 is the killer. Now, I will also offer people who face the scotch an antidote. Take it. Just take the, take the damn pawn. But do not take again. Do not take again. From here on out, bishop c5. Very simple setup for the scotch. For anybody that wants one, bishop c5. Queen f6 and knight e7. And you do this so that the queen guards and you have potential pressure like this. This is how I like to play the scotch with queen f6, knight e7, and short castle. And for anybody confused about the tactical sequence there, when I took on e7, it was a double check. That is why he could not play, because it was really the bishop that was causing the problem here. Better move here for my opponent would have been something like queen d8. Uh, because if he plays queen e6, I have a check anyway, a discovered check, which wins the queen. And that gets us the win. Well, my opponent just wasn't prepared for a, uh, for a sconch, but this is why you do this. This is why you play against me, because it's better to play against me, and I do this, and I get a win. Sledge, let's go. e4. We've had e4, e5. We've had a bit of a streak there, e4, e5. Another Karo Khan. Last time I faced this. This time I will play a Karo Khan known as the Two Knights. The Two Knights Karo Khan. Where you play like this and you defend. He takes. Uh, we are going to have Bishop C4 again for sure. So he took. Plays Bishop F5, so now I can't play uh, Bishop C4. But I can move my Knight to G3, which will attack his Bishop. Right? Very common. He does that. Um, 
Now, let's test his Karakhan abilities. Uh, that bishop can get trapped with... Okay, and he plays like this. That is actually inaccurate. He should be playing the pawn to h6. Because now I have knight e5, which would attack his bishop and hit this. But I'm not going to play that because beginners will be mostly just developing their pieces. Knight e5 is the punishment move. Uh, but I want to teach you guys, you know, good principles as well. Bishop c4 is a good move. Putting another pawn in the center. Um, oh man, knight e5 is so good. Uh, knight e5... Knight e5, but I'm going to be nice. I'm just going to get my pieces out, but knight e5, he needs to stop me from going knight e5. Karakhan players, you need to not allow knight e5. If he lets me play it this time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it. Knight e5 is, is dominant. All right, he's played. He's played the move. Now, I'm going to just keep developing all my pieces. Oh, and it, we actually have the Dono song, but it's, it's playing... But it's playing uh, as a regular song. When the run is over today, uh, when we get through our queue of players, I will, um, I will, we will do a giveaway of the of the course. Now, guys, I'm gonna castle queenside. I have not castled queenside throughout most of this run, but now I will be making the queenside castle. It is happening. A lot of people have been asking me, why aren't you castling queenside? But I've already pushed the pawn in front of my king, so why would I castle queenside? When does it make sense to castle queenside if you've already pushed some pawns? All right, so he's probably going to castle short, because, I mean, he is far from a queenside castle. Not really, but I just want to scare him. Gotta bring my rook. Okay, he's also trying to queenside castle. If I know that he's also trying to queenside castle, what if I jump my knight into the center of the board? No, my bishop does not block it, my friends. No, no, no. Queenside castle is like this. This bishop has no role. Oh, no. I can take four things. One is better than the other. This is the best. This is the move right here. Because when he takes, that pawn stops guarding, and bishop takes e6. is devastating. My bishops are way too strong. This could be a quick game. It's not just about the opening. You play the Karakhan, you've got to know your variations. So my bishop does not block the queenside castle here. Yeah, I was thinking to go for a Bowden's mate, but the queen is here, which is a problem. I want to play queen here next. He can't take. Sometimes in positions where pins are on the board, things like this are possible. And oh my goodness, that is mate. And oh my goodness, it's not stoppable. Use pins! Bing and pow. I mean, what can you say? Tough position. Tough position. As I said, oh no. He didn't see it. That is... That is a tough pattern. The knight cannot move because of the pin. The king cannot move because of the bishop. Now... I want to teach a Karakhan player about how to play his opening. h6 is necessary. e6 is necessary. You need to set up and castle kingside. You cannot play h5. It is too weakening of a move. However, you also should not take against the two knights. Against the two knights, you should bring out the bishop and reinforce the center on the light squares, okay? That is what you should do. Against the two knights, bring out the bishop, reinforce the center with the light squares, and take, and then move on with life. That is usually how I play the Karakhan defense. Now, my opponent played it and actually got a pretty decent position that was just kind of passive. We brought the knight into the center of the board, and from there it was, uh, it was very difficult to deal with. But next game, we get an 1100. We get an 1100.
E4, what will the 1100 play against this? The 1100 will get e4, e5, and a Vienna. We have played knight f3. Now, I played this setup against the close Sicilian guy. Right? But you can also do it here. Now, the next time I play the Vienna, I'm going to play bishop c4. But today, I'm going to play g3 and bishop g2 and d3. So we're playing the exact same setup that we did against the close Sicilian. f4 is a little bit dangerous with the bishop on c5. Let's play h3. And since I could play f4 last time, I cannot play f4 because it will stop me from castling. So you play h3 to castle and play king h2, defending the h3 pawn. King h2, I don't need to take that. There's no need. He could take me, but then I just take with the queen. And now I'm ready to play my f4 move. So, Vienna game against King's Pawn with g3. Very solid. Very non-standard. Castles. King h2. Now, f4. Now we relax. Take with the queen. This is the idea. Or, taking an opening of the rook. We already saw that before in another game. They both look good, though. I'm not going to lie to you. They both look very interesting. Oh, I want to teach you all pattern recognition. And I want to play moves like bishop g5, but I just feel like... ah, I got to go f5 this game. I'm very sorry. I mean, the, just forcing this bishop to retreat back like this and then pawn storm. I mean, how can we not like this? How can we not like this? This is the only active piece. G oh, but g5 is... Oh my goodness, it's still playable because the pawn defense... Look at this. We are not afraid. This is the full power of the Vienna Unleashed. Oh my goodness, f6. Or even bring in the queen. Or take and open the rook. Oh man. Oh, but f6 is so nice. He, he just can't move any pieces. Queen. Now that's not mate. Well, if he plays like that, I, I could get a mate. Now, I think trading the bishop is good. Getting to his king will be difficult. Here, here, here. Don't go here, though. Right? Don't do that. Let's go queen e1. Drop the queen back and go like this. Also, queen f2. So don't make one move blunders, please. Always look at what they can capture, please. Don't go here. What? Is he forgetting about the in peasant rule? And by the way, by the way, I'm not even sure here is the best move. Because if I do that, then he goes king h7 and blocks my pawns. However, in this position, we can shred open all of this. Does anybody see what I'm doing? My pawns are nice. Yeah. 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 And then let's get the queen in. Yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of nice. That is kind of nice. I mean, his king, because of this pawn barrier, his king is not able to get sufficient defense. Not able to get sufficient defense. And now we take this guy too. And we're getting closer. There's no mate yet, but it's, it's on the way. Because the second we get the queen to h6, well, no, no, no. But see, the problem is that we have this, and he actually has to go back. He has to keep a knight on e6 to cover queen g7 mate. He has no choice. I need to either find a way to get the knight out, or just mate him on another square. Right. So rook here, he just takes. That's not good. Rook here doesn't do anything. What if we bring the knight? That's who we have to bring to the party. Beep. Beep. 
beep beep or beep beep don't get distracted don't get distracted let's not get distracted i could st i could i could take i could take what if i play knight h5 knight g7 Knight h5. Just all about king safety here. I'm giving all the pawns away. <laughs> I don't, I really should. Oh, no, 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 no. No! No! I just I okay. Well, no, <laughs> no, no! Too many p. No, no! Oh, the pawn, the f pawn, the f pawn took everybody. Oh no! No! Oh no! Oh no! He lost the queen and two rooks in three moves. Oh no! Oh, goodness. Well, we're learning. That's what we're doing here. This is a learning stream. I could just take. We're good. Oh, boy. Um, we, we have an advantage here. We're, white is a little bit better here. All right. Queen g8. That's a good move. That's a good move. I like that move. Uh, I'm going to play bishop d2 because I want to get my rook out. Again, you don't need to fight with the only piece that you have. Like, you don't need to bring the queen everywhere. Okay, we got to get a, get a, give everybody in the game. Get everybody in the game. Okay, check. I can also take, but then he takes. Wow, that was terrible arrow drawing. Ah, uh, if I take the bishop used to guard this, that that should be checkmate. There should be a checkmate there. There should be a checkmate. There is a checkmate, in fact. Let's bring in the rook, force the king up. There must be a checkmate. Maybe I should have played bishop b4 first, actually, to prevent this. Is there really no checkmate here? Really? Oh, okay, well he plays like- I mean, yeah, but, th but this is okay. This is okay. Now again, rook and queen, this is the easiest thing, just make a second queen. Um, just make a second queen. So I'll play rook f6. I'll play rook f6. Okay, take. Let's get rid of it. Check. Promote the pawn. Easy. Check, promote the pawn. I've been teaching you guys the whole day that this is the easiest way to win games at this level. Just promote the pawn. Oh! He caught me with a pre-move! Wow! That was mean! The lesson is also don't freaking pre-move! I mean... I'm still winning, but good try. Good try. I also have queen before, luckily. Luckily, my queen can come back and stop his pawn, but that was a little bit scary. Oh, man. Students, huh? Beating me up. Takes. Okay. Now it's over. Check. He's not actually playing so bad. Like I can't I don't have another way to get this queen in. I th <laughs> I think I'm just going to have to win this spot first. Oh man. Ah, that's uh, this is real fresh. Alright, now the queen's getting in, and he's in trouble. He's in trouble. Alright. 
Fastest way to win. And like this. It's gonna be mate. It's gonna be mate very soon. That's finding really good moves. This is not stalemate because he can move his bishop, but it's gonna be mate on the next move no matter what. This guy keeps finding the one move to stop me from mating him. He found the one move. Check. And here. Wow. This guy is a savant of defense. Appreciate all the new subscriptions, by the way. I do see you guys. Um, okay, look. The lesson is against e4, e5. You don't always need to play knight f3. You can play like this and go for f4. And storm the kingside pawns. Kind of an interesting game, I think, that we played. And maybe another instructive moment here. Do not take on Passant. Why? Because he's going to go here. Setting up something called the Umbrella Pawn. And you are not going to have an easy time breaking through this structure unless you get your knight to that square or play h4, h5. So, don't always take on Passant because you can. And, bishop f3, sacrificial idea that we played in the game to get the two pawns for the piece but open up his king. Hope that was, uh, hope that was instructive for people. Hey, Cody! We've got four more people in the queue, and that is it for the day. We will pause after that. Hey, Cody is not online. Morgacol. You need to be in live chess. Morgacol, I will skip. And we skip over to Morgacol. E4. Didn't I have mate instead of taking the queen? Maybe. Another e4, e5, I will play knight c3. This is again the Vienna. Last time I played this, this time I will play knight c3 and bishop c4. Now, if he copies me... Ah, well, this wouldn't be an e4 speedrun if I didn't plug my e4 course. So, my friends... This is chapter 2, and when they play the copycat variation, the best line, not knight f3, queen g4. Appreciate it silently, thank you for the 5 gifted. Queen g4 in the copycat, hitting g7. Let's go. Now let's see, the best move here for black is queen f6, it defends and it attacks. So queen f6 must be played. And now we wait. What does he play? Queen f6 on the board. I really hope that this guy's not stream sniping. This is actually a losing move. Because of knight d5 allowing queen f2. I'm telling you, this line is so vicious. If you try the copycat with queen g4, you will catch people every single time. This is a threat. This is a threat. This is a threat. Oh, no. Oh, knight d5 is so brutal. I've had people play queen f2, king d1, queen f1, thinking it's mate, and lose their queen. Oh, no. So I just am doing this for the purpose of showing people different opening weapons that they can use because we got five or six king's pawns today and knight d5 and he has played it. King d1 and now there is the threat of this and the threat of this. So what will he play? Some people here play a move like king f8. King f8 sidesteps knight c7 being a fork and defends the g7 pawn. So let's see what he plays. There is also a very hidden trap amongst all of this, and he might fall for it. Wow, someone has a... Bishop f8, what? I've never seen that move. I've been playing into this variation a lot, and I have never seen that move. Uh... Okay. So knight c7 wins a rook. Knight h3 goes for a queen trap, but then he plays queen c5. 
So I guess I just take. I guess I just take. Now, there is something very venomous hidden amongst all this. I wonder if he sees it. And then I have to find a very accurate move. Okay, he didn't see it. <laughs> but it was there to be played. Uh, so now I'm up, right? We're up a lot of material. Uh, our knight is trapped, so what do we do? Well, let's get all of our pieces developed. And first things first, maybe we offer some sort of simplification of the position. He does always have the queen dropping back to c5. Uh, so maybe we play something like queen f3 to start. Mm, or knight h3. It's tough to say. Or queen e2. Queen e2, maybe. Just be solid. Queen e2. Here's the other thing. You don't want to get hit with d5. Okay? You do not want to get hit with d5. Because d5 will hit the bishop and the queen. And there was a reason he didn't have it. Oh my gosh, two raids for the price of one. Easy with aces. Shout out to my man, Easy with Aces. We're doing a rating climb with only E4. We're playing subscribers, also recording for YouTube, so I'm being mildly more professional than usual. I'm gonna go D3 and get my bishop out. That's my next plan. I am teaching Easy with Aces for PogChamps too, YouTube people. If you don't know, you haven't seen my lessons with him, you really should. Alright, now we just gotta get these bad boys out. Let's get the bishop out. We're hitting this queen. We're up a full rook. We are up a full rook. Playing an 1157 using our vicious Vienna preparation, the CompuCat line with Queen G4, gangsta stuff. Okay, plays Queen A5. I'm just gonna keep on developing. My knight is stuck, but what are you gonna do? You know, what are you gonna do? Another idea here to storm this queen is to play C3 and B4, and I might do it right now. I might do it right now. Also, trading pieces just helps me, so let's take H6. And then I'm going to go here. And I'm going there because b4 and his queen doesn't have a lot of squares. Two more games after this, we're going to play the real XKD. And we're going to play Abdul Rahman. Are both of you here, XKD and Abdul Rahman? Because if you're not, that will be the end of the queue. Uh, and hey, Cody, if you're back. If you're back, I will also give you a game. But you weren't here. You have to be in live chess. All right, let's play b4. If queen a4, just bishop b3. It's not a queen trap, actually. His queen... What? That's more material for me. Okay, I am officially up a lot of material. I've been up material. Now I'm up a lot of material. Um... Queen c2. Let me tell you why I like queen c2. My king is safe, and I've got bad intentions coming up on this c-file. I got bad intentions coming up. It ain't gonna be pretty. Rook c1 on the way. We about to ship it. We about to ship it. I've been telling you guys all day. You can either trade pieces when you're up material, or you can go bing bang pow bing boom and get a win. Okay, so I see his idea though. He does want this. So let's stop that. Now I also could have had bishop f7 to stop his king from running, but... Queen trade? Well, I can't say no. I'm up material. I can't say no. I can't take this. Let's go bishop d5. We'd like to win this pawn so that we save our knight. I also have to move my king and get this rook in the game. I also need to move my knight because my knight can't really move forward. So we're going to have a lot of reroutes in this game. Routing pieces away from where they're currently standing. He gives me a check. That's an absolutely terrifying move. I play king e2. And I have an extra rook and an extra knight. That's not a bad move. But I do take. I think. Right. I do just take. And my knight has officially a protector. Assuming, what does he play? Rook b8? Rook b8, maybe? Okay, that move attacks this. I'll just move it up one square. Also could have brought my king right over. Now, my game plan to win this is to bring this bishop back and infiltrate with the rockers. If I can get my rocks into the game, as well as my knight to this juicy f5 squared d5, we're going to mess him up big time. Rook b1, let's go. We're winning bigly. We are going to be winning bigly.
Bishop d5. Hits the rook. We are going to be winning bigly. e5 is not hanging, you memers. There it is, rook b7 on the board. He's going to run for it. I'm going to take a pawn. I have invaded with my rook, and I've taken a free pawn. I'm also attacking this big boy. He's not going to see that. He does not know that rooks go backwards, and he missed that the rook, that the bishop was hanging. I did call it, and now the second rook has to fly in. The second rook has to join the party. It is the only way that we're going to win this game. No, it's not. We have a lot more material. Well, what to say? What to say, yeah? Let's bring the second rook. Just as I said, my opponent does not have a lot of time. He will not be equipped to deal with two very angry rooks. And we win, and we cross over to 900. So, another e4, e5 for the books. Symmetrical variation. We did not play g3. Queen g4. Now... You guys are wondering what to do when they play knight f6. Watch my how to crush with e4 video. Uh, but in this particular game, he played knight c6 and win the copycat. Queen g4, a vicious move. Queen f6 does lose on the spot to this move knight d5. But king f8 and g6 are both possible to keep the game going. And you know, But if you'd like to play... Alright. So, hey Cody, one last chance. Hey Cody, are you in live chess? One last game or two? Where's Cody at? He's got 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Yikes. All right, the real XKD, the last guy of the day. Arakan. Actually, I think maybe we'll have one more. We will replace Cody in the queue. Okay, I took and I played the two knights. It is time for the advanced Karo Khan, the most critical variation, he plays c5. Now, the best way to play against this is to take it. You should take it, and when they attack your pawn, you should play f4. That's what you should do. And then, you should develop your knight, you should develop your bishop, you should also hang on to this pawn for dear life, with bishop e3. So you see, he's trying to get all his pieces out and win my pawn back. He can get he can get his pieces out, but don't let him get the pawn back. You got this pawn. Okay, so Scapy will replace. Scapy, are you here? You will play the final game of the day. Just go in live chess after this. Yes, a very common mistake. A very common mistake. He thinks that he's checking me, and he's going to win this pawn back. Now, I can either play c3, bishop c5, and b4, or I can just play queen d2. I think I can just play queen d2. I'm pretty sure I can just play queen d2. I need to say it to myself a few times, and it'll come true. I think I can play queen d2. And here's the point. Here's the point. Here's the point. Because when I play knight bd2, oh, I should have taken with the king. That was pretty stupid. I'm still better, but I should have taken with the king. I mean, he, he just said this. <laughs> he just... <laughs> whoops. No more. But you know, taking on c2 is still kind of dangerous uh, for him. Because I have bishop b5 and all these moves. Okay, let's just develop in castle. Just castle. castle so again against the advanced Karakhan c5 you take take against knight c6 you play like this that's not attacking anything so i just castle life is good i could play bishop b5 here 
But he's defending, so it's not as strong. If he played b6, I would have played it. Now, a very common other idea here is to play h3 and try to make this bishop feel a little bit stuck. So probably he has to go here. And when he plays that, I'll drop my knight into d4. That's the next point here. I can't play b4. I'd love to play b4, but he just takes. Play a3, b4. But my other idea is to just trap his bishop. Takes. There's an issue with this move. What's the issue? The bishop. Blocked. So knight d2, take it. Play knight d2 back. Ah, uh, but here I have the glorious move, and peasant. He went here, and peasant. Kaboom! Kaboom! And we're up two points. That move is why and peasant was invented, my dear friends. Rook d8, no attack. Let's go attack something else. I'm a greedy man. I see something that we can attack, and I want to go attack it. And when he plays king f7, I am going to play the gorgeous move. Which I can't say right now, because maybe he'll stop it. And I predict what we're going to get is this, 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 this. And he can't take because of this. And then we're going to win that. Everybody got that? That's actually a very good move. So if I take, he gets his knight in the game. But I kind of don't want to take. I think I should just push. His knight is going to be super passive now. But the question is, how do I continue to make progress in this position and deal damage? And I think I have found my solution. How would you guys do it? You could pause here if you'd like. Just kidding. We're live streaming. We can't pause. Bishop h6. And his rook is trapped. So his rook can't go here. Right? We go here and the rook is trapped. Okay. That's actually not a bad move at all. If I take, it's check. If I just take the rook, he takes this guy. So I'm going to be mean. I'm going to take this with check. He actually has to take. His king has no legal moves. Everything's covered. So when he takes, I take back. And I'm still forking him. Oh no. That's just the full rook. Push the pawn! I mean, I see a pass pawn. Another option here for white would have been rook f2 to just trade the rook off. I have been talking about simplifying throughout the course of this video. Push the pawn! And now when he goes here, I can get this pawn through by playing the move bishop g7. A sacrifice that forces the king away from this square and now we promote. He has offered me a draw. He will not be receiving a draw. He has resigned. We pick up some rating. So, another lesson against the stronger 1250 rated player. Advance Kara Khan, very vicious. C5, take that. Knight C6, defend, and then hang on to your C5 pawn. All right? Now here, he could have taken on C2. I did just straight up make a mistake. I would have had to play bishop b5 and start putting pressure. You'll remember in the second or third game of the video, my opponent also had a weak king like this, uh, weak knight. But there, the pawn was on b6 and was not protecting the knight. And for that reason, we were able to put some pressure. Uh, and we have one last game for the day. One last game for the day. It will be against Scapy. We will hit about 90 minutes of game time here. Now, really, from, from just one quick point about analyzing this game, is that I blocked with the queen because I didn't want him to be able to take. If I had played something like knight d2, he would have taken on c5, and he would have been completely okay. But by trading the queen and then being up my pawn, I just developed and castled, played a move like h3 because I saw his bishop had nowhere to go, and a trade and replace my knight where it used to stand on passant, won a second pawn, and kept it going. So always looking for attacking and forcing moves. Scapy is 700. And he also plays the Karakhan. Well, I'm going to end with a trick line against the Karakhan. Knight c3. 
All right, so queen f3. So knight c3 and queen f3. Let's play e5. Very tricky system, this early queen move. No, he's using the concept of danger levels, because if I take his knight, he takes my queen, but the problem is that his knight is still hanging. So where should I move my queen? One of these two squares, so that it maintains vision on the g4 bishop. And so when his knight moves, I take his bishop. So already we saw, you know, a trick on the fourth move. And really the, the biggest problem is that he doesn't have a convenient square. He can't really come forward. So he plays knight d7. Yeah, well, I can either take or take first. I'm going to take the knight first and then take the bishop. No, this is the final game of the day. In the next segment, uh, we are going to be playing... Okay, let's go knight g5 because he didn't take... We're going to be playing people who are probably about like uh, 1,200 plus, I would say. Okay, well now we can just go straight for mate. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. All right, let's learn. You got to take this guy. In the Karo Khan. You got to take this in the Karo Khan. You got to take it. Unless it's the two knights. You don't have to take it. But here, the other thing that you can do is you can push. But here's the trick. The trick is that if d4, I play bishop c4, I let him take, right? And I've got queen takes f7 as a possibility, and most people play like this, and then I just play knight e2. So they block in their bishop, and it's a very passive system. Then you play d3, knight, castle, and so on. Um, and so the best thing is to take, take, knight f6, and then I still play bishop c4. So, like I said, I mean, I wanted to end with a trick variation against the Karakhan, because we saw Karakhan and e5 more popular than any other defense. Um, now, in the next video, uh, we will continue uh, with the climb. We're going, I'll, I'll pick up the rating points in the middle, and we will see what, like, you know, people who are like 1,000 uh, to 1,200 primarily are playing. Okay? If you enjoyed it, you made it this far, give it a thumbs up, and... Uh, Check out some of my other videos that are going to appear on that side. Much love. Forces link and Discord in the description. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.